Hi everyone and welcome to the CSIRO Future of Meetings talk. My name is Glenn and as a member of the organising committee for this conference I'd like to begin this session by acknowledging the Daru people as the traditional owners of the land on which I meet you today and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. It's my great pleasure to introduce you all today to our next invited speaker, Dr. Michael Barngrover. Michael is a senior researcher and designer of immersive experiences at Koch University's Karma Lab, where he studies user experiences in social and collaborative virtual platforms. He's a leader within the global XR crowd and where he organizes the Zero Event series of multi-user XR platform explorations. In addition to this, he also develops immersive applications in the field of cultural heritage throughout his Raptor Dance Studios. Please enjoy the talk and join me in welcoming Michael for his presentation. Thank you. Hello and welcome to my webinar entitled What VR Events Reveal About What Really Matters. Uh, this is for the Future of Meeting Symposium, which is my pleasure to participate and to deliver this talk. So to introduce myself briefly, uh, I am a researcher and a designer. Uh, of XR broadly, mostly VR. Uh, I am the coordinator of the Karma Lab, which is uh, located at Coach University in Istanbul. We are a mixed reality uh, design lab. So we look at uh, designing and testing uh, for user experiences and interfaces, uh, as well as supporting and training uh, creatives uh, to explore uh, production and creation inside, uh, inside immersive spaces. So if you're interested, if anyone is interested in uh, reaching out to us about potential collaborations, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. Uh, my particular area of research actually is in collaboration. So I'm looking at how people can co-create, can, can transfer knowledge, exchange ideas, brainstorm, uh, and produce together in uh, multi-user virtual environments. And so uh, as part of my work, I have become the organizer of a series of events called Zero Events, which is for the XR crowd. The XR crowd is a community of industry professionals, enthusiasts, uh, creators. Um, and this community was created by uh, Andre Lunev. And it was originally the people who were attending all of the VR conferences. They would, you know, they would get to know each other, they'd see each other at these conferences regularly, and they'd want to know, hey, where, where are we going after the, after the event? You know, we paid our good money, we've come, we've sat through all the, the talks, we've seen the exhibition halls, but now we're, we're going to go out, you know, in, in Berlin or Amsterdam or these things, and, and we want to socialize, we want to talk, we want to talk about what our passions are and what we're, our work is. And uh, so they used to create, and they still do, create these uh, WhatsApp groups to facilitate that. But in 2020, we have the Corona-19, uh, COVID-19, sorry, COVID-19 pandemic, which uh, ultimately resulted in most of these events being canceled. And this community included many of the organizers of those events. And they got together and said, how can we virtualize? How can we still hold our events? Because this is the core of our industry and our, this is the core of our, of our creative XR community. Uh, and so they began exploring different available social and multi-user VR platforms, starting with things like Rec Room, and Altspace and Engage. Uh, and then proceeding over time, uh, we've done things more like Meet in VR, uh, Glue, uh, Arthur, Neos. And, uh, and so since, since March, every week, we've been exploring these things. And I took over in April, and I've been maintaining these and been focusing more on productivity, uh, as well as the, maintaining the original emphasis on events and conferences. And so this talk is actually going to be sharing a lot of the insights uh, that have come out of the events we have organized as well as the events uh, that we participated in. So the first thing is when we're going to virtualize an event, we're digitizing it. And then there's an important understanding that there's a, there are compromises involved in this. You cannot take everything and convert it. Not, not that it's impossible, though it is impossible to take everything, but you also just have limited resources. You can only take what you think is important uh, and bring that and represent that and try to recreate that. Uh, and so like when we are digitizing an analog wave, you know, something is lost. Uh, and so organizing these events in the beginning, the organizers had to prioritize what they thought was the most critical to maintain. 
Uh, and so we're looking at a couple case studies here. These were early case studies. This, in fact, was involving the, the XR crowd. This is the XR Base Investor event. It took place in April of this year. Uh, it was a part of the Love All Virtual 2020 event, uh, which is, uh, for those who are unfamiliar with Love All Virtual, it's uh, the largest VR conference and exhibition in, in France. Uh, historically bring, I think, like 20,000 people to this small, small town in France. Uh, and so it was a big deal. And because they were a VR event, they had to virtualize and they had to use VR as much as they could. So here's, a, here's an image of what this sub event within Laval Virtual looked like. This took place at Engage. Uh, I worked this event. I was someone who was working and being a facilitator, a room facilitator here. And we see an amphitheater. We see participants seated around uh, in these, these seats looking at a stage where there's a screen. Uh, where there's a panel. And this was actually a startup pitch uh, event. So they actually would pre-record uh, startups, founders up on stage, delivering a, a PDF, a PowerPoint presentation. They, they, because of the Engage platform functionality, they could record that, and then they could play that again as many times as they want later for an audience. Uh, and, w you know, we see that, well, this looks, this looks like a real event, you know. Largely, I mean, the, the, the aesthetics, the, the, the actual place looks, you know, much different than Laval. It would be hard to have a place like this, you know, with this big open open air um, venue next to what is presumed to be either Hong Kong or, or San Francisco or something. Here is another view of the same event. Actually, what's, what's funny is this is the, this is the Laval Virtual's official event, looking at this sub event on a screen. So, the main Laval Virtual event took place in uh, Laval Virtual World, which was created by Verbella, which is another platform, which is a virtual world platform. And we see that they're doing the same thing. We've got, we've got like a movie theater style thing. Now we've got some seating and everyone's looking at a stage and looking at a screen. Now this type of event, this type of structure prioritizes the speaker who is the VIP, you know, it's the, it's the expert or the company representative who's coming to deliver a keynote or you know, transfer some knowledge. And fundamentally, to, to, to cut to the, 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 the end of the webinar ahead, that's not a great use of, of a VR environment. Uh, and so to clarify, this Engage is a VR environment, whereas Verbella is a virtual world environment. And even in the Verbella case, this is not a great use case based off of the feedback we've all gotten for months now after having done them. And fortunately, these events were not limited to just screens. They had other areas to explore. They had separate sections to facilitate um, uh, socializing and networking and just sometimes, fortunately, fun activities, Verbella in particular. Uh, in Laval Virtual World, they were able to have a lot of other side act uh, activities that you could do that had little to do with any type of knowledge transfer. Uh, but those ended up being really important. And um, the reason they were important um, and the reason why just the, the stage presentation does not work very well in these virtual environments is because it fails to positively answer the question of do I need to be present? If I'm sitting in, a, in, a, in an audience and I'm looking at someone up on stage, it could be a video, it could be a live person. Relative to me, in my, from my perspective here in an audience, it really doesn't make a difference. I'm not engaging, I'm not interacting with that speaker. And we'll come to an example where maybe I could be, but in, in these examples, I'm not really. Uh, and so I don't need to be present. I, I need to see the content, I need to hear the content that the speaker is delivering or you know, the visuals that are in the, the presentation but you could just as easily have given to me that in a PowerPoint or the PDF uh, before I got there. And so the need for presence was not satisfied there. So because I didn't need to be there, it really wasn't worth my time to be there because this is not free. Going into an, uh, you know, a big auditorium maybe and, and taking a seat in the back row or something and, and just, just sitting casual and being able to leave, that's, that's easy to do. And perhaps it's a bit more comfortable uh, you know, once you've done it so many times in your life, you've sat in chairs and, and rooms, but wearing a headset 
still, even for people who are wearing headsets, VR headsets regularly, there's a bit of discomfort, you know? Um, and so whatever I'm doing just has to be worth that discomfort and worth the time spent in that bit of discomfort. And I'm not saying it's very uncomfortable. It's just, it's something, I'm wearing something. All right, and so the other issue is if I don't really have to be there uh, and, you know, it's not really worth my time. The, at least I need to know that I can do something because maybe I'll make it worth my time. Maybe something I'm going to do, uh, regardless of what's being presented, I, I can make it worth my time because I can find something to entertain or engage uh, or create value for myself. And again, the audience participation aspect doesn't really give me a lot of options about what I can do. So coming back, to what I said about interacting with the speaker, the Altspace platform, and I think the VR chat platform now has also, well, maybe they always had it, it just wasn't something I saw very much before. You can release emoticons. So without speaking, without interrupting, uh, without physically being a nuisance, you can give feedback to a speaker, which is important for the speaker actually, but it also for the, for the audience member, for the participant, it gives them something to do. And that, that being able to do something is essential. And that's why typically virtual presentations just don't, they don't really succeed from an audience perspective because the, you, you're not giving the audience much to do. So outside of knowledge transfer environments, outside of like presentations uh, and passive uh, activities, uh, all my research includes uh, in workshops. Uh, and here's an example of a workshop that I ran uh, with a group of creatives who are XR creatives, actually. They're either researchers or, or, or artists themselves or curators. Uh, and this was a workshop to discuss how could we create a, a collaborative platform in VR. And what came out of this, there were a number of interesting insights, but the main thing was, it was, they needed to be there because they, they needed to interact with each other. They, this was purely, this was social. And they, some of them knew each other, some of them didn't know each other, but they knew that everybody there was valuable because they were participating. So they needed to be there. Um, they needed to uh, have something to do. What was, <laughs> it was worth, well, the question was whether it was worth their time. And we'll come back to that in a second. But they, but they could do things. However, they could do things, but it didn't mean that they were able to their proficiency with the, the tools, the controllers, was, was a problem. The, the proficiency, even if they were good with the controllers, to understand exactly what could be done in this platform, which is Rec Room, as something as simple as writing on a wall, writing a post-it note, uh, was, was a, a hurdle that a number of them really didn't overcome. And while they obviously could do them physically and they were comfortable in VR, they regularly are creating things in VR. They either did not feel that they were proficient enough or, or were simply not proficient enough. And that created a lot of frustration uh, and ended up being that most of the time we were just talking, which is what happens in almost all of these uh, collaborative meeting platforms is we're just talking. Here's a, an example of a workshop I recently did in Arthur. Arthur is a pure meeting platform. And we see we have these 3D diagrams uh, that you can build through dimensional diagrams with, with connectors and labels and different types of primitive shapes. We have all these uh, spatial arrangements of, of, of notes and labels. And we, we work with them. And, you know, and some people really take to them. One or two people will really just be, be focused on them. Um, but broadly speaking, 95% of all the actual information exchange and ideas is, is purely discussion. Uh, and we'll go through long periods of time, whether it's in Altspace or Rec Room uh, or Arthur or Engage. Most of the time it's just talking because people are not confident that they can do what they want to do efficiently and well enough that it's not a hassle, it's not embarrassing, it's not frustrating. Um, so even for these types of events and meetings, we're just, 
it, it, from my observations over the last six months of running these events, we're just not really there. Yet. Um, and it's, I don't think we're going to get there anytime soon. However, there is a type of event where we've had really great success. And, and this was fortunately a part of the Laval Virtual uh, and the, uh, the XR Base Investor event, which was purely net, networking, socializing, just talking. Don't have to perform. Don't have to make something. Don't have to create a diagram on the fly. Everyone can just talk. Everyone can gesture. And, and this works really well in VR. So here's an example of just a networking event we did. We did this with uh, the XR crowd, part of the Zero event. And what people did is right before we went into here, we had a Zoom call. We had a Zoom call. Everyone does a quick introduction, five minutes, or kind of a speed presentation of who they are and what they're doing. And then we're going to go in and we're going to chat. And that worked beautifully because once they, so when you're physically present, this is what's important is the ability to meet other people uh, and to be around other people who are physically present and VR allows you to do that. So what, uh, what is essential about this is that you don't know what's going to happen when you're chatting with other people, no matter how well you know that person, there's always some degree of uncertainty because it's another person. And this is what VR can potentially offer to someone who's creating meetings or events or something uh, in a virtual context is that they can preserve serendipity because when you're in Zoom and some of these other, these other productivity platforms, there isn't much unexpected uh, because everything is, is text-based or it's, it's you know, one-way channel communication if it's like video, you know, it's hard to have a conversation back and forth. It's, uh, it's hard to see so many different video channels and perceive the, the, the expressions and stuff like this and what people are wanting to cue with their body. But in VR, even though we don't have facial tracking and uh, we don't have the expressions, we do have bodies and gestures. Uh, and that adds a lot as well to the, to the audio stream. And so not only do we have these environments where we've got other people there, and so we don't know what they're going to say, we don't know who's going to be there really, and we're there's this possibility of something good coming out of it. We also can take advantage of these virtual environments to surprise us. We can add things to virtual environments. Here's an example of a workshop that took place in Neos, which is a really creative platform. And everyone's got these different avatars. This was kind of a flash meetup. And, and the environment was quite unexpected for most of us. Uh, and it was, again, a very inspiring environment to work in because we didn't know who was gonna bring in something that we could not have foreseen to, to demonstrate an idea, to show off something. We could decide we were gonna be talking up off the floor because we just wanted to be up in the air. Uh, we could go down to another environment. We could change the environment. So VR allows us to create an expectation of the unexpected. And that is invigorating and that is inspiring. Uh, so, Here's a more recent example that would have just finished by the time you're seeing this webinar. And this is the 77th Venice International Film Festival's VR expanded program. So uh, I was a host site for the program for the festival in Istanbul, but I'm also working the, the actual VR chat based event where the real festival happening is happening and uh, where we have all the directors and the producers and potential investors and the, the critics, the, the accredited guests are all here. And we see in VR chat, I mean, VR chat is famously serendipitous. You don't really know what's going to happen in there sometimes when you go in because the avatars are so wide and varied. And this is not appropriate for many, many types of meetings, many types of audiences, but for creative audiences, it, it, it very much is. And so not only do you have the unexpected uh, personal representations, physical representations of oneself, we also have this large area that you can explore. And VR, again, allows you to have space that you almost could never really have in a physical conference or a physical event, whether it be a meeting or, or a festival. Um, and so VR allows to create, to facilitate serendipity through participants, geographically distributed around the world, uh, spatially through choosing to explore a world or go into a new place to have a conversation or just to see a different perspective of the, the, your, your peers and other participants, uh, and then how you represent yourself. Uh, so this is really where VR shines. But as I said, not every platform is right for every audience. So when you're picking the right platform, 
uh, the right VR platform, you need to ask yourself these questions. You know, who is the most important person for me? And this goes back to the very, very first virtual events, which we, we covered, uh, Laval Virtual and the XR Base Investor event. Uh, they certainly thought the speaker was. Because in a traditional event, that is, tends to be the case, the VIP, the speaker, the speaker justifies and attracts the people to come. But that's not, the speaker is not creating the value. The speaker is creating the, the justification. The value is coming from the people who actually uh, are at the event. They're standing in line to, to get a, a coffee. Maybe they're going to go out to lunch and they're inviting the people that they just met. And, and it's, it's all that other unexpected serendipitous socializing. That's where the value comes from these types of events. And so facilitating that for the audience is most important because in a physical environment, you can let the audience do that. But in a virtual environment, you must facilitate that. To, um, you must spend much more effort to facilitate that than you might do in a physical one. So you have to know the size of your audience, how many people need to be in a room. Uh, there are lots of constraints on that. Uh, how should the participants behave? What types of active uh, interactions and activities can they engage in? How can they express themselves? Whether it's through emoticons during a, a speaker's presentation, or can they go out and can they play games? Like in Rec Room. In Rec Room, you can have your, your corporate meeting, and some, com some companies do have their meetings in Rec Room. And then for a quick, you guys can run out to the, to the Frisbee golf course and then come back to the meeting. Um, what are the appropriate aesthetics? Again, VR chat allows a wide variety of representation, but if, I'm, if it's important that I trust you, it tends to be important that I recognize you and you're consistent in appearance. And so something like Engage uh, is, is much better for that because Engage allows you to place uh, photo, photorealistic textures on your model. Uh, and are, do I need to be able to customize or to create things in my world? You know, um, Altspace allows you to quickly add some branded materials to an event quite, quite dynamically. Uh, and other, other platforms like Rec Room or Neos, far more even than that. So uh, being able to create is a powerful way to quickly adapt a, a space, a venue, to conditions that may be developing during that event. Uh, and same thing for a meeting. So here is a non-exhaustive list of platforms that are either purely for meetings or, or rather specifically for meetings or for events and conferences. And I definitely suggest that you all take a look at them, starting with Arthur and Glue and moving on down from the meeting platforms that can facilitate some conferences. They, they, they have the support to, to have some larger groups. Down into Allspace and Verbella, which are pure event platforms. Allspace for live events, up to 80, and they have ways of doing more than that. Verbella for hundreds for proper like large scale events and conferences. Uh, and then we have things like Sansar and Museum of Other Realities if you want to have some type of concert or art exhibition and festival. And then we have things like Rec Room and Neos and Anyland which are certainly more on their creation uh, and giving a lot of creative potential there. So these are, uh, these are all great platforms. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of good work into them and then I do recommend that they be considered uh, for uh, appropriate events and meetings. So if you're going to do one, uh, you just have to know that VR is, is a personal, it's a subjective, it's a physical experience. You're wearing something and you are in another place and you have, you should, almost all of these platforms I've mentioned, you have a body, you have a presence. Uh, and that has to be rewarded. And the effort that I take to be present must be justified. Um, and so if you're an organizer, you need to make sure that you're focusing on the right stakeholders. It's not, it may not be the speakers. And in the VR context, it probably isn't the speakers. It's probably the actual audience members. So thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I hope it was useful for you. Thank you again to the organizers of the Future of Meeting Symposium for this opportunity. And thank you for your attention.